Hi, in this video I'd like to give you some updates on Ziggurat, the next generation open source corpus indexing engine that Andrew Hardy and I have been working on. Andrew and I work a lot with IMS Open Corpus Workbench, both as developers and as users. Many of you will know Corpus Workbench through CQP Web, the front end developed by Andrew. Corpus Workbench was originally developed in the 1990s. In the meantime, lots of additional features have been tacked on up to the current version 3.5. With these additional features, CWB is still a competitive engine for indexing and querying large corpora. We've also taken care to ensure backwards compatibility, and so we can still with corpora that were indexed in the last millennium. However, the age of Corpus Workbench is beginning to show, especially with the three limitations shown here. The most important one being that it's limited to a corpus size of 2.1 billion words, which happens to be the largest possible signed 32-bit integer. This 32-bit limitation is baked into the data model in the file format in a way that makes it impossible to raise the limit without breaking backwards compatibility. This is why Andrew and I embarked on Project Ziggurat, which aims to create an entirely new corpus indexing engine built from scratch as an independent component to serve as the basis for Corpus Workbench version 4. To understand where we're coming from, let's take a quick look at the tabular data model of CWB version 3. This is a very influential format which is also used as the input format for Sketch Engine and is similar to the Connell file formats that are popular in natural language processing. Such a tabular data format can be represented as an annotation table similar to a relational database. Each row of the table corresponds to a single token. Rows are numbered starting from zero, we call this the corpus position of the token. And then the columns correspond to annotations, the first column always being the surface form of the token. A drawback of this format is that structural annotation, often inserted in the form of XML tags, doesn't really fit into the table. So these structural attributes are stored separately, as ranges of start and end corpus positions. In the case of annotations in a star tag, copies of the attribute are created that are annotated with the corresponding values. In order to achieve fast lookup, CWB uses a lexicon-based indexing scheme, as shown here. For each annotation, that is, each column of the table, a separate lexicon of all possible annotation strings is created, and then we only store the lexicon ID numbers in the actual table. However, no such indexing is available for structural attributes. This storage model also explains the limitation to 2.1 billion words, because the corpus positions are stored assigned 32-bit integer values. When Andrew and I started designing the new data model for Ziggurat, we quickly agreed on one fundamental principle. KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. So we wanted to preserve as much as possible of the successful tabular data model of CWA3, but extend it in such a way that it becomes more flexible and scales to much larger corpora. A Ziggurat data store consists of multiple layers. Each of these layers corresponds to the rows of an annotation table. The primary layer holds the actual object data, usually a sequence of tokens. Secondary layers create structures, such as segmentations, trees or graphs over this primary layer or over another secondary layer. Each layer is annotated with one or more variables corresponding to the columns of the annotation table. Unlike CW3, variables can have different data types which allows them to be tailored to particular applications. You can think of the layers of a data store building on top of each other like the levels of a cigarette, hence the name. Here's a list of the different layer types and variable types in case you want to ask us about them in the Q&A. It's perhaps most intuitive to show a few examples of modeling different types of corpora in Ziggurat. Here's a slightly simplified version of the Connell U format used by the Universal Dependencies project. It takes the form of a simple annotation table with word form, lemma, part of speech tag, followed by morphological features as attribute value pairs, and then two columns for the dependency graph, indicating the number of the head token and the edge label. This format translates directly into a single primary layer with seven variables. Tags and lexical features are stored as index string variables as in CWB3. For token IDs, we use plain strings, and for the morphological features, we have hash variables. The dependency graph is represented by a pointer variable that simply holds the position number of the head token. A second example is a tree of XML elements here representing text structural information, including the empty element pause at the middle. 
Again, the token sequence translates into a primary layer with several variables for its annotations. The XML elements are stored in a tree layer in their natural ordering and linked to the corresponding spans in the primary layer. The tree layer has an index string variable for the element names and a hash variable for all the attribute value pairs in the start tags. Finally, a more challenging example, where we have multiple concurrent tokenizations of the sentence it's out of this world, created by two different NLP pipelines and also with different annotations on top. It's actually possible to represent this situation in Ziggurat using a virtual primary layer corresponding to individual characters. So each position in the primary layer is a single Unicode code point in the original text file. This virtual primary layer doesn't need any variables, saving a lot of disk space for storage of the character sequence. The concurrent tokenizations are then two segmentation layers linking to spans in the primary layer. Each tokenization has its own annotation variables and further layers building on top of it. So we have multiple hierarchies of annotation layers over the primary data. The beauty of the Ziggurat data model is that if you only work with one of the tokenizations, there's no difference between having this a primary layer or as a segmentation layer because it's simply a data table. Searches will be just as efficient on the tokens stored in a segmentation layer than they would be on the tokens in a primary layer. The Ziggurat file format collects all the data for a given variable or layer in a single container file on disk. This container is made up of reusable components, which are selected and combined in different ways to provide efficient access for each type of variable or layer. The container header includes a bill of materials that lists all the components and their positions in the file. The good news is that users and applications don't need to know anything about the file format, because all that is encapsulated in the Ziggurat library. We see Ziggurat mainly as an embedded library that provides flexible corpus indexing services for many different applications. For this reason, there will be API bindings for many high-level languages, including Python and R. Our implementation of CWB version 4, and in particular the new CQP query processor, will be one set of users of this generic library. Here's a mock-up of what the Python API to Ziggurat might look like. To conclude, the state of the Ziggurat implementation looks a bit more like the photo shown at the bottom of this slide. We've completed the specification of the data model and file format, and we've started implementing a scratchpad prototype, which is being written in PHP by Andrew. This prototype will be used to work out the details of the API, to iron out problems with the file formats, etc. As soon as a part of this prototype implementation has been completed and sufficiently tested, it will be ported to efficient C code in a GitHub repository. So please do follow our progress updates on the CWB website and come to the Q&A session to ask us some questions. Looking forward to seeing you there. Bye!